Good morning students, welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we will be continuing on with our content lecture on the Cold War, on the start of the Cold War. And what you will need to have in front of you, you actually have been given a copy of the PowerPoint slides that you see on the left. So you will need that in front of you. You can also have your textbook in front of you should you need to refer to any additional information or any questions that you might actually have through the course of this podcast. Now, for the benefit of today's podcast, I have actually decided okay, to create another set of PowerPoint slides that you will see on the right. Okay, that is actually on the Cold War actions and reactions. Now, why I actually decided to toggle between two PowerPoint presentations is so that you can actually see while I am going through with you the content on the left, okay, you can actually see how I've actually organized it in the table that you see for the slides on the right. Okay, so it sounds a little bit confusing right now, but doesn't matter. Okay, as we go along, I'm sure you will actually catch on. So the last time we spoke, we actually talked about reasons for why the Cold War actually started. We also, we talked about conflicting ideologies. We talked about how the wartime alliances actually started to break down and how there was an environment of mistrust on both sides. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the series of events that actually happened between the time period of 1946 to 1955 and we can actually look at this series of events as evidence about how the Cold War had already started and was actually playing out. Okay. Again, as you go along the lesson, you will see that there were a series of actions that happened which triggered reactions on another side. Right? So the Cold War is really very much a competition between the two superpowers, Soviet Union and USA, and how one action from one country would actually spur on action from another country. Okay, so we're going to start with 1946. Okay, so in 1946, okay, what happened? Stalin actually made a speech to the Politburo. Okay, so it was an internal event, right? And in this speech, he actually acknowledged that there was inherent conflict between capitalism and communism. Okay, he also acknowledged that he feared the economic and nuclear might of the West and how there was a need for Soviet Union to actually catch up economically and okay, militarily. Okay, so now if you look at the slides okay, on the right, right, okay, you, you see how I have uh, this point being an action from one country usually triggers a reaction from the other country. Right? So this results in a series of actions and reactions and this table okay, is very clear okay, what action triggered what reaction. Right? Okay, so going back to Stalin's speech to the Politburo. Now, take note that this was meant for the years of his Congress members, okay, for lack of a better word. It was not a speech that was made public to the Soviet people. Okay. So he just wanted to acknowledge that, hey, you know, there's fundamental conflict between communism and capitalism. And his intention really, okay, was actually perhaps just to scare the West if they caught news of his speech. But there was no evidence, there's no historical evidence of Stalin actually planning any form of attack at this point in time on the West. Okay. However, right, among his Politburo, Okay, there was actually, uh, there was some, uh, I would say, spies. Okay, and these spies actually relate the information to this man, okay, Cannon. Okay, George Cannon. Now, George Cannon, okay, was the foreign minister, right, in Soviet Union at that point in time. And after hearing Stalin's speech, he actually reacted by typing out a very, very long telegram and sent it over to USA. 
right? So this telegram was 8,000 words long. Okay, can you imagine how long it, it would take to read that? All right, okay. And in this uh, telegram, he actually described USSR as being very aggressive, okay, as wanting to spread their dominance and influence to the rest of the world. And in the telegram, okay, George Cannon actually recommended the US government to adopt a tougher strategy in order to deal with and contain Soviet Union. Right? Okay, so let's pause for a while here and I want you to see how just a simple act of Stalin's speech actually triggered the long telegram. Okay, on the part of uh, an American. Right? Now, not just that, okay, in, also in 1946, Churchill made a speech. Now, I hope you remember that Churchill, okay, was uh, British, uh, the British Prime Minister, right, at a point in time. And he actually made this speech, okay, that is known as the Iron Curtain speech. So, he actually said, an Iron Curtain has descended across Europe and has divided Europe into two political and ideological camps. There are now two spheres of influence, the Soviet sphere versus the Western sphere. Right? Okay? So this speech by Churchill, the Iron Curtain speech, we actually see it as verbal acknowledgement from the West that there was now two camps in the world. Right? You have the communist camp, the Soviet sphere of influence, and then you have the democratic capitalist camp, the Western sphere of influence. All this simply triggered okay, by just Stalin's speech. Everybody doing good so far? Okay, now moving on. Okay. To the Cold War begins. Now, at that point in time, okay, when uh, the long telegram was actually conveyed to America, okay, and when Churchill made the Iron Curtain speech, the president of USA was Truman, okay, Harry Truman. And you will recall, I have mentioned to you, that Truman was a very different personality okay, from his uh, predecessor, Roosevelt. Right? Truman was someone who needed, he was vice president, Okay. He stepped into the role of president after Roosevelt's death. Okay. He was not voted in by the public. Okay. And hence, there was a need for him to prove his worth to the American uh, people. Right? And that also accounts for his much tougher stance and less tolerant stand against Soviet Union. Right? So, at this point in time, okay, in 1947, Truman actually made a speech to the Congress, okay? And in this speech, he actually convinced the government that they needed to take effective action to contain Soviet power, right? And that concrete action need, needed to be done to stop the spread of communism. So if you look at the graphic okay, that I have on your right, okay, you will see that this is actually a political cartoon okay, that represented the two spheres of influence that I had just mentioned to you earlier on. Okay, so you have the, uh, the West on one end, and then you have okay, Soviet Union okay, represented by this burly bear on the other. So, in tr the Truman Doctrine is also known as the Containment Policy, and this is a political policy, okay? Just keep that at the back of your mind. Okay, it's a political uh, policy. And here, okay, he actually said that it was USA's moral duty to prevent the spread of communism, that it was their job as the big brother of the world to actually help and prevent more countries from falling into communism. Okay, that USA would do what was necessary to protect 
the democratic world from the threat of communism. So you see this very, um, this heroic stance that USA was taking at this point in time. Alright, like, hey guys, I'm the big brother, you know, I'm the superpower of the West and I'm here to protect you from the big bad guy Stalin and communism. Okay, so that, that's what uh, Truman actually declared. Now, how do you think, right, Soviet Union would react? Do you think Soviet Union would just, do you think Stalin would just sit back, okay, and not do anything? Okay, obviously not, right? Obviously, that, that would not be the case. So, Stalin also stood up and declared something, a policy, okay, a political policy known as common form, right? Where he said that, okay, all Eastern Europe countries are to be members of common form, and all of them would then become satellite states where Soviet Union would maintain a certain level of control over. Okay, so if you look at this graphic that I have included in this slide, okay, you will see, okay, Soviet Union, right, and then you will see, okay, the Comiform members, right, Eastern Europe, the Eastern European states. Okay, so take some time to look at the content on the left. Okay, the Truman Doctrine, okay, or the containment policy as it is known as, okay, it was to force communism to remain within its borders, right, and that America would do whatever was necessary in order to actually prevent the spread of communism. Okay, one good example, okay, where the Truman Doctrine was at work, okay, actually in Greece and Turkey, Right, they actually provided financial aid to Greece and Turkey to prevent the countries okay, from falling into the threat of communism. Alright, so let's move on. Okay, I just mentioned about uh, how America actually aided Greece and Turkey. So let me just move on to the next part of the containment policy. Okay, so we have the Truman Doctrine as a political policy. There is also an economic aspect to it which is known as the Marshall Plan, okay? So the Marshall Plan is actually part of the containment policy, okay? And it was one that actually provided economic aid, financial help to Western Europe so that they would not fall under communism. Now, at this point in time, you might ask this question, huh, what is the link? What is the link between money and communism? Okay, very simple. Now, what is the basic ideal that communism actually proclaims? Think about it for five seconds. Okay, if you remember, communism actually promotes equality. Am I right? Okay, it actually promotes equal economic status to every citizen. So everybody has an equal amount of wealth. Now, link this back to what was going on after World War II. Okay, after World War II, okay, a lot of European countries okay, were in shambles. They were recovering from the devastation of the war. And a lot of people did not have money. Right? So the idea that communism would give them equal wealth was very, very appealing or would be very appealing to a person or to a country where there is not enough wealth, right? So here I am struggling, okay, struggling with my day-to-day -day life, okay, not, not having a, a proper job, okay, my standard of living is not high. And then I see communism, communism, hey, communism, pro uh, promises to give me equal wealth regardless of my status in society. Would that not appeal to, to me? Yes, it would. Right? Okay, so from the point of view of America, right, in order to prevent Western Europe from falling into the trap of communism, they would need to provide economic assistance to Western Europe to help her recover. With this economic assistance, 
if they could build a prosperous and successful Western Europe, the Western European countries will not fall into communism and they will be able to resist communism. So that was the uh, that was where the Americans were coming from. Okay, that was where Truman was coming from when he thought about the Marshall Plan as part of the containment policy. Right? The whole idea, okay, of I give you I give money to you, okay, so that you will not be tempted to go with the communists and to be attracted to the idea of equal wealth. Follow so far? Right? So if you look at the uh, infographic I have here, okay, on the right, okay, you will see that as part of the Marshall Plan, okay, you see the amount of aid, okay, this, this little squares, uh, uh, sorry, rectangles, okay, actually represent the amount of financial aid that was given to Western Europe from America. Now, at this point in time, you should be asking yourself, what was Stalin going to do? We already know for a fact that Stalin was not going to sit back and do nothing. Am I right? Okay, so in response to the Marshall Plan, the economic policy of the West, he actually drew up the Comicom, which was the economic policy of the East. Okay, so Comicon okay actually stands for the Council of Mutual Economic Assistance, and under Comicon, very much uh, like the Marshall Plan, okay, Stalin actually promised to unite the economies of all Eastern European states, so that Soviet Union could actually provide economic aid to them whenever they needed. Okay, however, okay we know for a fact right that Soviet Union was financially not as powerful as America. Okay, hence the amount of aid that they offered okay, to the rest of the Eastern European countries was not as much, okay, and it disadvantaged them where and favored themselves. So most of the aid, most of the financial aid as part of Comic Con went to Soviet Union instead of the Eastern European countries. Okay, all right. So it's a little, it's quite, it's quite laughable, right? But I just want you to see that when one superpower created an action, the other side needed to have a reaction. Okay, they cannot simply just like, oh, you have an action. Okay, I just sit back. Oh, no. Okay, it's like, okay, he he has done something. He has acted. Okay, I have to react to keep up with whatever was going on. Okay. Right, so you see now, okay, you see the map on the left, okay, you see how the world, okay, or rather Europe was now bipolar. Bipolar meaning, okay, there are two sides, okay, so you have, all right, the west, okay, so whatever's in green, okay, represented the democratic Western European countries. And whatever is in orange represents, okay, the east, the Soviet sphere of influence. So you have the West, okay, the uh, Western sphere of influence versus the Soviet sphere of influence. Everybody doing okay so far? Right? Okay, if everybody is doing okay so far, I'm just going to take a short break now, okay, and uh, cut off this particular lecture because there is just one last bit that I need to do. Okay, on the Berlin blockade, and I'm going to keep the Berlin blockade for my next lesson so as not to overwhelm you too much. Okay, I just want you to focus and remember and understand what I have actually done today. Okay, I actually talked about how the Cold War actually started, I talked about the actions as well as the reactions that the so, uh, Soviet Union and USA actually took against each other. Okay, when we come back next week, okay, for next week's lesson, okay, it will be the last part of uh, this outbreak of Cold War. Okay, we are going to look at how the Cold War actually expands into East and West Germany and we are going to look at the Berlin blockade. Alright, and then that would wrap up the 
this chapter on the outbreak of the Cold War. Okay, follow so far? Right, okay, uh, if you have any questions or if you felt that I was going a little bit too fast, okay, please actually um, rewind and listen to the podcast again. Okay, try to follow. Your notes are with you. Your textbook is with you. If you have any questions or if you don't understand anything, okay, please feel free to drop me a text or drop me an email and I will get back to you sooner. Alright, okay, so that's all for the lesson today. I will see you again next week. Thank you, class, and have a very nice day ahead.